Hello everybody, it's the Historical Gamer once again, and today we are returning to Unity of Command 2, Desert Rats, the newest DLC out for Unity of Command 2. It actually comes out today. Uh, so if you're interested in picking this up, there is a link in the description to the DLC for this game. Unity of Command 2 is a turn-based World War II war and strategy game. In, very, in many ways, it is very much a beer and pretzels style game, but it is surprisingly complex, and the scenario design on these games is off the charts. They are very well done uh, scenarios. Now, Unity of Command 2 Desert Rats looks at the North African campaign in 1940 and 41. It also looks at the uh, Commonwealth operations against the Italian colonies in uh, Abyssinia, that's uh, modern-day Ethiopia, as well as uh, Italian Eritrea, uh, which is uh, adjacent to it. Um, and it also looks at some of the operations in Greece uh, in uh, the campaigns there. This video is episode number four of our Let's Play series of this DLC. We started a little bit before the release with a couple of episodes uh, when I was able to get some early access to the key. Uh, and we have uh, successfully uh, launched several uh, battles. We are just entering the newest conference. So I believe we've won two battles in East Africa. We've won two battles in North Africa and one in Greece. And the next campaign that is coming up or the next conference, which is sort of a set of, of scenarios between uh, being able to spend your prestige and upgrades and things like that. Um, the next uh, campaign or next conference looks pretty big. I think there's two North African battles, a Greek battle, and then two more in Ethiopia, I want to say. Uh, so we've got another five or so battles before the next conference. This is a big one. I think it's probably getting close to... Uh, the midpoint of the campaign, but I guess we'll see. The DLC is supposed to have uh, up to 20 scenarios in it. So without further ado, let's just jump back into the uh, video this footage was taken from. This was taken from a live stream on my Twitch channel. If you're interested in joining those, there's a link in the description. And uh, yeah, without further ado, let's get back at it. As well, to move into the next conference, Prestige can be used to upgrade our headquarters, and buy new cards. I've got a satur Saturation Airstrike for free, so we'll draw that card, because that's a good card to have. Uh, we now have two Saturation Airstrikes, and we also have two extra trucks. So I don't want to spend a lot of prestige on like buying things I don't need. Um, I am going to get the C-47 Air Supply. Um, I don't know that the C-47 would have been the Air Supply aircraft in 1940 or 41, but in any event. Um, but I'm going to spend 30 on that. That way, if we get troops or units that are completely surrounded, then we don't have to worry about resupplying them. Meanwhile, the next campaign looks like, or the next uh, conference, if we look at the Mediterranean, there are two battles. Here, there's going to be disaster in Cyrenesia, and then defense of Tobruk. So this is obviously the, the Africa Corps is going to show up. Um, are these not Western Desert scenarios? Oh, no, they're not. That's weird. So you can see how this headquarter is Sudan and this headquarter is East Africa. We go to the Mediterranean battles. It doesn't say either of these is Western Desert. So presumably the headquarter we buy doesn't matter. We also have a disaster in Greece. Lots of disasters. But no headquarter to assign to. So there's no point, in my opinion, in spending money on upgrading the Western Desert Force if that headquarter isn't going to be fighting in any battles this conference. Meanwhile, if we move to Eastern Africa, there is value in upgrading the Eastern and Sudan headquarters. So we've already got these guys upgraded to artillery barrage, river crossings. I guess the thing I'd want is better range and movement. The other thing I might want is creating pontoon bridges. But I'd just rather spend 50 on getting better range for both of these headquarters. I don't use most of these other capabilities very often in the game, so I'm inclined to save the prestige. I mean, all it means is airdrop supply dino, but yeah. So I'm inclined to keep the 315 so that we can buy better units when we go and fight. And I've already maxed my cards, so I guess we'll do that. Yeah, these are not Western Western Desert. Interesting. So the first scenario, we, we actually can fight any of the 
scenarios in East Africa, and then we also have to lead with disaster in Cyrenesia, which I'm assuming is Rommel showing up. The Battle of Cairn. Basically cut off from reinforcement and resupply, the Italian army in East Africa had to pick its battlefields with great care. As Commonwealth forces advanced toward Asamera and Masawa, or Masawa, by the way, the, this is Masawa was the location of, I want to say one, definitely one, but maybe two or three, like, huge Italian defeats, sort of in the age of, uh, of colonialism, the late 1800s, the Italians were trying to create uh, a, uh, an African empire, and one of the reasons that Ethiopia was still independent uh, until, what, the 30s when Mussolini took it? was because the Italians had failed so miserably uh, against the Ethiopians uh, in, uh, in their efforts in the late 1800s. And one of their sort of historic defeats uh, was at uh, Masawa. And I'm sure I'm not pronouncing that right, but I've never actually heard it spoken. So I've read it many times, but I've never heard it spoken. So I'm not sure how you pronounce it. Anyway, one such location was Cairn. This otherwise unassuming town sits on the strategically vital and only rail line leading into the heartland of the Itali of Italian Eritrea. Furthermore, the town's surroundings offered excellent defensive positions in the form of forts and harsh mountainous terrain. Forts? Well, it's a good thing we got those uh, flying wings. As expected, the Italians have opted to make a stand in and around Cairn. The town and its surroundings make for a very imposing obstacle indeed. Think rugged granite peaks with little to no cover for advancing troops. In blistering heat, your orders are to launch, or sorry, your orders are to clear as many of the surrounding mountains as possible before launching an assault on Cairn itself. Once you break through, utilize your superior mobility and drive hard and fast for Asmara. Okay. So, what do we have here? We have to take Karen by turn five, Asmara by turn six, Masawa by turn seven, Mount Amba by three, Fort Daldrock by three, Mount Falsho by three, and Mount Samna by three. Now, most of these objectives are all in and around Karen. So it's kind of a question of like, how systematically are you willing to sweep them? Uh, Maswa by seven down here. Asamara by six. We have 10 turns. I never watched the Desert Rats TV show. Um, Pwn. All right, so. And defense force. We have one Indian infantry unit to assign. And I want to give it to these guys because they'll lose their veterancy status. You become a veteran unit at 200 experience points. These guys are 235, so we could give it to them. These guys are 265, so we could give it to them. Plus, they've got two steps. Yeah, we'll do that. Two special steps, that is. Got all this prestige now. Might as well use some of it. All right. These guys are... We're going to... So let's see here. These guys have two more battles. These guys have three more battles. So I definitely want to upgrade these guys or spend some money on these guys. So they already have a Matilda 2. Probably also want to give them engineers if we're attacking in the mountains. And then maybe an Indian infantry step. Oh, shit. I shouldn't have done the... Uh, can I undo that? Yeah, I can't. So let them keep the engineers, but I don't want to give them the uh, infantry step because they'll lose their veterancy status. Four steps with veterans, I think, are better than five with regular. And then these guys will give some 25-pound artillery pieces. And then these veterans down here... guys both have two steps two um, big specialty um I'll definitely give him an infantry step get him up to five I 
don't know if I want to spend more points on them or not. Let's, let's wait and see. We can always assign a specialist unit later, I think. I can't assign to the troops th to the right because they're cut off from the HQ. Let's do this. Let's use a one of our saturation cards. We'll have one more this campaign. We are going to bomb... So if I bomb Karen, it'll hurt the troops around him. But it'll probably also turn Kern into rubble. If I bomb this, then the adjacent troops will suffer. Let's bomb Kern. So it hurt the troops in Karen. Didn't really do much to the surrounding troops. So yeah, yeah, I guess. Um let's do a Set piece here. Didn't breach him, interestingly enough. Breached him on the second try. I'll take zero to two. The engineers are suppressed but not destroyed, so we immediately take that and get another card. I guess I'll just use that bomber card right away. All right, so we took one fort. Okay. Do I want to risk attacking Mount Amba? Probably not. Let's end the turn. Do I need trucks? Maybe, I guess, we can expand the depot here. All right. I might be being a little too conservative here. Yeah, because they did just dig in where we had uh, gotten their entrenchments down a bit. We have till three for all of these forts. It's turn two now. God, I can't breach the fuckers. I can't tell. All right, nice. Good result there. I don't think I'm going to get many of these secondaries by turn three. I think that first turn's failure on a lot of those set piece attacks kind of fucked us. I don't think it's likely we lose, but...
Can we drive them back? Like, can they fucking retreat, please? Give me the goddamn C-47 card. How did they take two casualties but not actually take two casualties by the looks of it? I don't understand. All right, this is turn three, so we're gonna fail all these secondaries, which are extra prestige or specialty units or whatever. Uh, and good news, we've cut the enemy off from their uh, point of supply. I suppose we could just go all out, use all the cards. It did nothing. They just flew over. Ugh. Rookie mistakes all over. All of these failed. Take Ace Kern is by five, right? Actually wasn't a bad result. Now there was that. So we destroyed the enemy at, at Karen. We weren't able to occupy the hex. We should get that next turn. We'll see if they move their depot. Carpet bombing on the mountain, what do you expect to achieve? You know, I don't need logic from you, you Mac. They were in... Glad we lost that unit. So we took Karen on time.
I don't get the like these this unit's destroyed, but we still can't move into its hex thing. They're gonna move into Mesuila, they're gonna fortify. We're not gonna take SMR this turn. Zero to two breach. Okay. This is turn six, we have to take it by seven. So actually maybe we will. to overrun, take the base, finish him off. Nice. All right, so we did manage a second a secondary objective. and take that base I just took. They're gonna keep digging in there though, that's for sure. All right, these guys don't fight again. Got him. Oops. Go take that prisoner of war there. Everything on the rail line is in supply. So we did have the one unit starve out, which kind of sucked. But overall, we won. I spent like all of my cards at the beginning of a six battle conference, which is probably not great, but we won. These guys who fight three more battles are in good shape. Two more of these guys are in good shape. Two more of these guys are elite. Was the unit that died the another one that had three more battles to go? Whatever. We won. I don't wanna I don't wanna sully the fact that we won. Victory is victory. We'll continue for one more turn so I can go capture the Italian HQ. there's any like perk for capturing 100% of the map probably not I don't think anyone's at risk of falling out of supply this turn.
All right, that's it. I don't want anyone to like fully die, so we'll end the uh, end the battle there. Oh, well, it ended it for us. Gratitude of an empire. Looks like an Irish flag. Win the Battle of Cairn scenario. The whole empire has been stirred by the achievement of the Indian forces in an Eritrea, wrote Winston Churchill to the Viceroy of India, shortly after the victory at Cairn. Throughout World War II, Indian troops were such a vital part of the British war effort, it is hard to imagine British victorious, Britain victorious without them. In light of this, the post-war British efforts to stop Indian independence seem all the more shameful. Campaign milestone. Meanwhile, we don't get a gold star, it's a silver medal. Uh, casualties were modest. We suffered one British, uh, one Indian, and one free French. Two of those steps were specialist, one was infantry. And uh, that does it, I think, for East Africa, right? At least in the northern portion. Hey, hey, hey uh, Lady Magnus, thanks for the follow. Um, let's do the Ethiopian Blitz here. So that'll be an interesting fight. 15 scenarios long, or 15 turns long, and um, I'm imagining there's a fair, given the name, there's a fair bit of open, open maneuver. Well, welcome. Mr. Jazz, also thank you for the follow. All right, so we have Ethiopian Blitz. It is with the East African Headquarter, which we did upgrade its logistics this last battle. Uh, you can see it takes place or starts on March 1st, 1941. By the end of February 41, the Italian presence in south southeastern Abyssinia and Italian Somaliland were co was collapsing. Even the Italian forces further inland were facing desertions and revolts from the indigenous troops and civilians. Informed of the chaos within the enemy's ranks, General Cunningham immediately reorganized his forces for a swift pursuit. Furthermore, the timetable for the naval landings in British Somaliland, Operation Appearance, was accelerated to coincide with this advance. East African Headquarters, 15 turns. Uh, I was actually saying earlier uh, that the, the zoo was fun. Zoe had a really good time, I think, but it was a really warm day, so most of the animals were, like, laying down, so she didn't get, like, up close with a lot of them. Um, she was very interested in... I think she was just kind of, like, intrigued. I didn't really get a lot of, like, not really any good photos of her reactions, because she was mostly just sort of like, huh... What is that tall thing with a really long neck that's eating this tree not that far away from me? Interesting. Um, and then there was another, I think, uh, I can't remember exactly. It might have been a zebra. There was something that was making like a like a licking noise um, with it and doing this funky thing with its tongue. And then she started doing this funky thing with his, her tongue. And she's in this like really mimicky phase. So I think she might have been trying to mimic it. Um, but the one thing that she really was like the most shocked, the, the only thing she really like really like very visibly reacted to was an, it had an animatronic giant sloth. And we were walking by some of these, these creatures, these, you know, the fake, uh, fake animals or whatever, because the giant sloth is, is extinct, I believe. Um, and it like makes this gr like weird growling noise and moves because it's a machine and it does those things. And she just like looked at it and just her mouth just like dropped. She was just like, what? So that was pretty fun. Um, but it was a good time. All right. So let's get into the Ethiopian Blitz. Middle East Command Dispatch. Italian and indigenous troops are deserting en masse. You are to aggressively pursue what remains of the enemy's colonial units. Your main force must charge up the Strada Imperial toward the crucial road junction at... G oh boy. Jigjia? I'm sorry if I'm mispronouncing that. At which point the naval landings of Operation Appearance will commence near Berba. Simultaneously, the Gold Coast Brigade will undertake a diversionary advance toward Nigali. Waste not one second. Addis Abba awaits. Note, due to the distances involved in this operation, Mech advises your, your, you to motorize East African force by using a truck card. I don't have a truck for, I don't have a truck card. Oh, I do. I do. Okay. So we've got a lot of objectives in this one. 
Uh, we don't have a lot of troops in this one. So hopefully it's telling me the truth when it says the Italians are deserting en masse. Second South African Brigade, I'm assuming, is landing somewhere. I don't know where. Doesn't show me where they come on the map. Oh, up here. So. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. All right. What do we all like? We've got the one motorized unit over here. Can we upgrade them at all? We can give them an extra mechanized step, but that'll drop them out of their... They'll lose their veterancy. I think I'd rather just give them the... Uh, Armon Harrington. Spend some prestige on that. Give him a specialist. So most of, Many of these troops don't fight another battle. Most of the troops on the map don't fight another battle. Oh my god, this thing is so freaking huge. How am I supposed to get all these places? Blitz indeed. Uh... Nothing increases the range, I would guess. All right, these guys have two more battles. We could assign engineers to them. They're already maxed out stepwise. I guess I'd rather reconnaissance. Marginally worse on the attack. But it'll, it'll help me advance more quickly. And that's the only unit I can upgrade. I'm going to give three cards there. And a card there. Or not a card, but uh. Alright. I mean, that's all I'm going to do upgrade wise. Didn't spend most of my prestige because I don't have units to spend it on. So what do we have to do? Dira Darwa Dawa is the first objective. Way the hell up here by turn nine. Oh god. And then Adas Abba by turn twelve. Baraba by six. R by an eight. Nagili by ten. Iska Badia by two. Which I'm thinking we can probably just move into right away. So we'll do that. Victory! And I get a free card. So that's a that objective was easy enough. Six up here. So Berba and Giga, both by six. This main roadway looks like it's got to be our avenue for advance for our mechanized troops. So we'll do that. A lot of prisoners were taken there. Keep these infantry on that main road. I guess. Ooh, nice. A new supply line up here. Also, by advancing that far, we keep the, the bridge intact. Pull two of those depots back. Problem is, like, these guys over here by 10. It's almost like you got to advance west with these troops, then directly toward Nagili to have any chance with that. And then a wash. Adas Abba. Oh my god. I don't even know how to... I don't even know what to do! Alright, well we moved our units, so... 
I guess we just one we go one more. Yeah, I know I've got air attacks, but I don't have any enemies in sight to bomb. Okay. Two units have supply disruption. Okay, I just don't know what I'm supposed to do with my infantry, to be honest. Because they're so frickin' slow. Can you motorize pull an infantry unit for one turn, changing its movement to mobile and giving two MPPs an extended movement? I guess that lets me move faster? did with that card I think I just used a card to make him mobile permanently maybe I'm not sure all right we're gonna have to move the uh, East African headquarters forward too to have him keep up drop that and we'll just leapfrog this the supply forward okay in turn, still no enemies in sight, I guess. We'll drop supply in the motorized forces up front to keep them going. Gotta keep them in full supply, keep them fully combat effective. Nice, we took that bridge near Sabanj. These guys moving toward Nagili. I'm guessing that's not unoccupied. So there's someone who wants to fight over there, potentially. I don't know that I can push that supply any further north. Headquarters will push, but it doesn't look like it lets me drop supply further north, so we'll see. We're going to keep dropping. I, that's the last of that airdrop. I don't want I want to keep them fully supplied and moving. This is a weird scenario. I don't think I've ever played anything like this in this game where there's so huge a distance with so little resistance initially. Driving Sim. I can't push these depots any further. They are in supply this turn, which is nice. But they're like at the max depot size too. Probably shouldn't have moved that headquarters up with no supply. We'll have to see if maybe we can take the enemy supply from them. Oh, 
Also, once we take Baraba, that'll give us a new source of supply. Jiga by six. R by seven. Okay. Jiga does have a unit there. R does too. Zero to two, overrun, nice. Gets me back in supply, hell yeah. So I think next turn, I don't know if these troops land right away or not. Oh, they land right now. Okay. All right, let's use our bombardment here because like there's nowhere else to use it. Get the three suppression. So the base will fall next turn. Let's bomb these guys, we got them in sight, right? It didn't do anything. What do we have to get here? by 10 or Nigili, however you pronounce that I actually need to do that kind of went backwards there but I need the ability to draw additional depots forward I'm going to need that to keep the advance going that's why it's there okay All right, we'll get those new reinforcements next turn once we take Baraba. That should allow us to drop more depots here. Three depots there. We'll pull the five back here. So that'll get our headquarters back into supply. Motorized troops are only one out this turn, so they can actually attack. They did lose their specialized troops. So we still have a little bit of time there. Deploy now, second South African. Why won't it let me deploy? There we go. Okay. Very nice. Lance, thanks for the follow. All right, so we should take Har next turn, I think. I should have bombed it to begin with. Should I guess I still should. Where are the other objectives, by the way? This one down here. This one up here. And a wash over here. Okay. Yeah, that would have made a difference. Oh, well. Thank God they drew supply. All 
Okay, so we took our... Dara was still... We'll have two more turns to take. I don't think we can increase that depot size. Yeah, we can't. All right, so at least we're still in supply this turn. We'll go for the first primary. Nice. Nice bombardment there. Okay. That was a fast one. I assume this base is guarded. Bypass. We're gonna be out of supply again. That's not great. Take zero to two. Fuck. Wash by 11. I don't think I need the motorized for this. So we're going to drive them down this road. Will we pull more supply on map from this railway? I'm not sure. think we'll be able to motor pool supplies up to those tanks. Oh, fuck. They're going to be out of... How far forward can they go? Far is the last one. All right. They'll still be in reach. Okay. Yeah, like, this is a whole different ball game in this particular battle. I think Nageli in the south is pretty unlikely. They're really out for two turns. Well, they're dead. Oh well, we're not gonna take uh, Nageli then. But, Dara, dear Dara, or however you pronounce it, fell. I don't understand how I'm supposed to push supplies for it at this point. I don't see any indication of other spots on map to bring supplies in. Like, that doesn't help. I don't know what to do. I mean, I guess that's why airdrops probably are important on this map. Still, it's a long way to go out to Awash and Abasada without any additional supply sources. There's gotta be. Is there 
something to repair a bridge or something it can't the expectation can't be that you just take enemy depots right can't imagine that that is the expectation. Where am I supposed to put them? Maybe we get rail next turn, but usually it's right away. I get the lead unit there gets supply from capturing enemy depots. I wonder if there's any enemy troops at Adasaba. supply next turn I think So everything but one of the secondaries. I guess it's just there's not going to be opposition for you there. So it's saying good luck. Go for it. They're going to die. Hey, the Italian headquarters disbanded. Oh, now we have supply on the rail line. Bad those other steps died. All right. Well, victory's a victory. End turn. We are victorious. One secondary wasn't taken. The rest of everything else was taken on time. So we get the gold star. We get the Nigerian Blitzkrieg. Uh, the 23rd Nigerian Brigade advanced from the border of Kenya to Mogadishu, continued up the Strada Imperial to Har, and finally dashed from Har to Addis Ababa. All in all, in all, the brigade covered up more than 2,000 kilometers in just over 50 days. This remains the fastest military advance over such a distance in history. Victory! Three British casualties. One of those armor, one infantry, and two step losses. The enemy lost 4 KA and 20 prisoners. We scored 210 and got plus 10% supply. And we're over 500 prestige, which is hella nice. Oh. Vico try! 
Nice spelling, Stein. Don't worry, I never can spell. All right, so I, that might be everything in uh, East Africa. I don't know if there's anything into Italian Somali land over there in the east. Meanwhile, we have three more battles before the end of this particular conference. We've used pretty much all our cards. We have Disaster and Cyrenesia. Then we have Defense of Tobruk. And then we also have Disaster in Greece. But we will fight those battles in the coming uh, episodes. I hope you guys are enjoying this series. Please leave your thoughts below. And we're going to wrap this one up right here. So until next time, this is the Historical Gamer saying once again, thank you very much for watching. Leave your thoughts down below. And until next time, as always, this is the Historical Gamer saying until next time, I'm out. Bye-bye.